Haplotype blocks refers to areas on the chromosome where everyone either has one type or the other type. And I went on in that lecture, which you can go watch again, uh, to explain to you that because of recombination as a part of making egg cells and sperm cells during meiosis, these haplotype blocks get chopped up uh, into smaller and smaller bits. So for instance, you know, one generation you might have that, and then the next generation that, and that, and that, and that, and that, so that everything gets scrambled. So that these, these chunks of the chromosome where everybody either has one type or the other become smaller and smaller. This is all relating what I told you right now to diploid cells. Haplotype networks are based upon haploid cells. Haplotype networks are based upon haploid cells. So typically you, may, you would make a haplotype network based upon the mitochondria and the DNA within the mitochondria is haploid rather than diploid. The same thing is too true, by the way, of chloroplasts within plant cells. Uh, and so you can make a haplotype network either based upon the mitochondrial DNA or based upon the chloroplast DNA if you're talking about plant cells. And another place where you could make a haplotype network would be based upon the Y chromosome. And here's what it's showing you. The size of these circles corresponds to the number of individuals that have genetically identical, in this case, mitochondrial DNA. The size of these circles corresponds to the number of individuals that have genetically identical mitochondrial DNA. So th this is showing you individuals of uh, a, a, the diamondback moth. And so you can see that there's a lot of diamondback moths that have genetically identical my mitochondrial DNA corresponding to this mitochondrial DNA haplotype, referring to the, uh, the DNA sequence of that particular uh, strain of mitochondrial DNA. You might find it surprising that a bunch of different moths can all have the same mitochondrial DNA, but it shouldn't be that surprising because there's no genetic recombination going on. There's no reshuffling of the deck. If children inherit the mitochondrial DNA of their mothers. End of story. The only time where you get a difference in the mitochondrial DNA is if there's a mi mutation in the mitochondrial DNA and that mutation is inherited in the, in the children. So yes, it's, it's actually very common that individuals will share the same mitochondrial DNA haplotype. They'll have genetically identical mitochondrial DNA. You don't see that with uh, diploid cells because the DNA is constantly getting shuffled around between the, the DNA inherited from mom and the DNA inherited from dad, but that's not the case with mitochondrial DNA. Now let's talk about the colors. So this corresponds here to a, to, a, to a large number of individuals of this moth that all have the same mitochondrial DNA sequence. These colors correspond to moths that were collected in different geographic areas, in this case in China. So even though all of these moths have the same DNA sequence for their mitochondrial DNA, in other words, the same haplotype, these moths were collected in different areas. So across different areas of China, this area of China, this area of China, and this area of China, you have moths that have genetically identical mitochondrial DNA. They have the same haplotype. These lines connecting different uh, mitochondrial DNA sequences. So here's another mitochondrial DNA sequence. There's not a lot of, of moths that have this mitochondrial uh, DNA sequence, but there's a few. So why is this mitochondrial DNA sequence, this haplotype, connected here to this larger haplotype? This haplotype here is very genetically similar to this haplotype here, and in fact differs only by a few mutations. So the, the length of these lines corresponds to the mutations that separate, that differentiate the uh, the, the DNA sequence of these individuals from the DNA sequence of these individuals. So th there are a few mutations that separate their, their DNA sequences. And then th this individual here, it looks like it's just a single individual that has this mitochondrial DNA sequence, this haplotype, uh, differs from this haplotype by uh, this many um, mutations. So the length of these lines is proportional to the number of mutations that separate one particular haplotype from another haplotype. 
so you can see what the main haplotypes are that most, most of the moths have, and then you can see what, what some other haplotypes of moths are uh, that probably derived from those main haplotypes by mutations.